forward. Perfect. Okay, so I wanted to welcome um, our guest speaker, Romy Marlowe, today from the Un Uncommon Woman, Women, and I'm just going to do a brief introduction here. Okay, sorry. So Romy Marlowe is the CEO and founder of the Un Uncommon Woman, an empowerment platform and movement for women who desire to make an impact and lives and live lives they love. Romy Marlowe is an executive leadership coach, a speaker, a mentor, a teacher, an activist, a philanthropist, and a curator of artistic and unique immersive experiences for women. Her passion to lift the voices and visions of women has quickly shown her that through the following passion and purpose, women can build wealth, impact while doing the work they love to do in the best way they do it. So welcome so to welcome you to today's presentation. We really appreciate having you here. Thank you so much. I really, uh, I'm really grateful to be here. I'm going to ask that if you can, that you turn your videos on. Is everybody comfortable doing that? Uh, when I do this particular session, uh, because it's a storytelling session, uh, because we dive into your lives and into a little bit of who you are and, and what you're about, I like to see the faces of the women that I work with. And this is a safe space. For you. So don't worry about the background. Don't worry about if you're having a bad hair day. <laughs> I just want you to feel safe and comfortable uh, so that we can do this work. And my goal, my intention is that you walk away. Oh, look at all your gorgeous faces. See, now there you go. Uh, I, my intention is that you walk away from this workshop with confidence, with clarity of purpose. And feeling composed and courageous. Because the truth of the matter is that when we feel good about our speaking and our sharing, that we are more courageous and we're more apt to do things that we might not do otherwise. So often what happens is women come into my space, for example, something like this, and they think that it's going to be one thing and it's something completely different. So I just want you to set all of your expectations aside and just know that this will in some way move the needle for you. I often talk to my clients about the one degree shift and that if you have a one degree shift today, it's a massive success. And often this particular workshop moves women in a direction in their business that they didn't recognize they were needing. So you know how they say, you ask for what you want, but you get what you need. So you might find that throughout this workshop, there are some gaps in your clarity, for example. There might be some gaps in the way that you present yourself. You also might recognize that you've grown. And sometimes when we grow, uh, we have a hard time expressing the newness of who we are and what we're doing. And until we're actually put on the spot, and I'm going to tell you a really quick story about that, to share, you don't really realize that the old version of yourself is the one that's showing up. So recently, I flew to Chicago for dinner. Now, it sounds extravagant, and it was, <laughs> but there's a woman who I follow on LinkedIn, and her name is Erin Gallagher. And if you don't know who Erin Gallagher is, I highly recommend looking her up. Her movement is called Ella and she is the creator of the hashtag Pipe Women and her whole foundation of everything that she does is that women supporting women and women standing up in the name of other women is the way that the world is going to transform into the world that well is better for women right and so I've been following her for quite some time and she does something called the fairway dinner. Now, a little bit of a, an aside, recently her hype women hashtag went viral when she did a post about Jamie Lee Curtis hype women, uh, hype, hype womening one of her dear friends who she was in a movie with. And so this post went viral, the hype women hashtag went viral. And what the point was that women should get so excited about supporting other women that you can't tell who's winning. 
<laughs> if it's the friend who won or if it's the hype woman, her bestie who won. So I went uh, to this fairway dinner. I decided to take myself to Chicago for dinner and go sit at a table with Aaron and 19 other incredible women. So it was a private dinner, something I've never done before. It was one of those things where you see an opportunity and you just say, if I don't do this now, I'm going to regret it. And so I jumped on it and I flew myself to Chicago for my birthday. Okay. <laughs> it was a gift to myself. And I went to Chicago for dinner and I sat at a table with Aaron Gallagher and 19 other women. And it was one of the most extraordinary evenings of my life. And that was on April 26th. However, what was extraordinary about it was not the expectation that I had. I thought I was going to go to this event and that I was going to rock it, you know, and then I was going to meet all of these new women and they were going to all be part of my world and it was going to be incredible and I was going to get to shine my new light that I'm feeling in my soul um, over the last year. And I went into this room and I am somebody who I would consider confident, especially when it comes to speaking. It's a really big part of what I do. And I went into this room and we sat down at this table and it was this big, long, beautiful table, all lit with beautiful candles. And there was flowers and all of these women who were sitting around this table were C-suites and CEOs and women with these massive movements and women saving women and children from Afghanistan. And I'm sitting amongst, and Erin, by the way, was on my right hand side. She sat me beside her. And it was time to introduce ourselves. And I was like, I've got this because this is what I do. Like, this is literally what I'm going to teach you ladies to do today. And Erin introduced herself and she went really quick. And then she said, well, who should go next? The girl, the woman on my left or the woman on my right? And I was sitting on her left. And she said, Marla, you speak for a living. How about you go? And ladies, I was paralyzed. I just was like, okay, hi, my name is Marlo Ellis, I am, and I just, I don't, I don't remember what I said after that, I was, I had sweat dripping down my back, and I just kept thinking to myself, I want to go under the table and just hide, this is awful, and I felt like it just went from bad to worse, and I talked about my old story, like, the way that I started the work that I'm doing today. I didn't talk about any of the big stuff I've done about my black and white galleries and the philanthropy and the live events and putting women on stages. I just, I don't even remember. I just remember it was awful. I felt like it was awful. And when I was done, and I have no idea how long I took, I just wanted to crawl under the table until the end of the night. And then all of these other women got to go and tell their incredible stories and I just sat there thinking, oh, she's just, she just nailed that. Oh, she just, holy crap. I'm sitting at this table. What? And of course, because you go first, you know, you're kind of like, you get to watch everybody else um, take notes. Anyway, needless to say, it was a complete disaster in my mind. And at the end of your introduction, you got to make an ask. So I'm sitting at the table with these incredibly powerful women. And I have one opportunity to ask for anything that I want. It can be money. Some of these women are angel investors. I mean, this is how bad it was. <laughs> yeah. It could be money. It could be somebody to put you on their stage. It could be connect me to so-and-so. And I just said, all I ask is that you support the uncommon woman. That was it. And I just, I just thought, I can't believe that that was my ask. I mean, I flew all the way to Chicago to ask these women to support. Like, what does that even mean, right? There's no clarity. I didn't give them any direction. Anyway, I walked away from that event realizing, and this is what I want to share with you right now, that who I used to be a year ago and who I am today are two different women. And I hadn't actually found the words. So my question to you is, are you the same woman that you were the last time you introduced yourself to somebody really important. Are you the same woman that you were when you started your business? Are you, are you living in the same values? Is your mission and vision the same? Are you serving the same people? And I'm talking like the same people. Or has your ideal client changed a little bit? 
is what you need now different than what you needed six months ago? Because let me tell you, in 2015, I was a very different woman with very different needs <laughs> than I am today, seven years later. And so it was the best and worst experience of my life. I didn't sleep that night. I just beat my, you know how we do this. I, you give yourself 24 hours to feel sorry for yourself. I was like, I'm so humiliated. I can't believe how awful this was, you know, just the whole thing. And then I got up in the morning and I took myself for a walk and I got a really good strong coffee and I walked the streets of Chicago and I thought, never again am I going to show up in a room full of women like that and lose the opportunity to knock it out of the park and ask for what I really want. And so I got super clear. It was the best thing that ever happened, right? So I paid a lot of money to have a, a rude awakening, but it was what I needed. And clearly I needed to be in a circle where I was intimidated and where maybe I felt like the small fish in order for me to grow and rise. So I'm hoping that what I do with you today will provide you an opportunity to not have that happen to you. <laughs> so I'm going to just share with you uh, a little bit of the backstory, super quick, of the one minute story and why it's super important. And then I'm going to give you my one minute story. And then we're going to knock it out of the park. And by the time that this is over, you will have the beginnings of a really powerful one minute story, if not the entire thing. So normally when I do this workshop, I do it over about two and a half to three hours. So, but that includes me going and sitting with women and really dialing in their message. So we're going to do the framework and then you can take it and you can work on it. Okay. And if you're somebody who wants more deeper support, you can always reach out to me and we can go to that place where you actually really dial it in. And I, this used to be your three minute story masterclass. And then I realized when you're sitting around a table with a bunch of uh, entrepreneurs or CEOs or on, you're on a board or you're at a networking event, people don't have three minutes to hear who you are. Right. And so I thought one minute or less is what we need. And so I shifted three minute story masterclass to one minute story. So this is specifically for the question, what do you do? Okay, this is the answer that you're going to get. Now, the reason that I feel like this is so important is because I have sat at, in my life prior to that awful night where I didn't know what I was going to say, um, I have sat at so many tables and been at so many events when I've said to him, so tell me a little bit about yourself. And they, they talk for 15 minutes. And they tell me everything. And that's not really what I wanted to know. Sometimes the question is, what do you do? And then often I will get the response, oh, I do so much. I don't know where to start. And then they, it, they'll say, I'll give you the short version. And it ends up being the super long version. And they've lost me. And then at the end of that, I still honestly walk away going, I really have no, no clue what she does. Oh, like I still don't know what she does. She just spoke for 20 minutes and I still don't know. Now, if you are that person, it's okay. Because look what happened to me, not even a month ago. It happens, but the answer is in you. It's inside of you. It's just that you haven't probably spent any time really getting clear about it. Now, why is your one minute story or your one minute message so important? Well, take a look at my story. I mean, I lost an opportunity. I lost 19 opportunities that night. There were 19 women at the table ready. I lost 19 opportunities. Who knows what would have come of it? I could have been standing on stages. I could have had an angel investor for the business I want to start up in uh, 2024. There could have all kinds of things. So when we don't have the answer to the question, what do you do? then we lose an opportunity to possibly fill a void or, or to get the support that we need or to support somebody else who needs us, right? And that's why we're here as business owners. So first and foremost, it is the clarity, the opportunities that come with knowing who we are and what it is that we're here to do. It also is obviously efficient. And the people who are around us will feel like we are confident and clear about who we are and what we offer. And when somebody wants to bring us in as a 
service provider, whether it's a coach or a mentor, or you have a brick and mortar, or you have a product, or uh, you have a service, people want to work with people who are confident. If there's somebody who is incredibly confident and knows exactly what they do, and somebody who's like, yeah, well, you know, I kind of do this, but then I kind of do that. I kind of do everything. Who are you going to hire? Right. And so really what I would like to share with you is how to be the confident one. How to be the confident one. Now, remembering that this is the answer to the question, what do you do? Who are you? What do you do? It's kind of the two things. It's kind of two of them. And again, I'm doing this in a really short period of time. So normally we would go deeper into that piece, but just know that you can take this and from here you launch into answering questions. Okay, so this is really important. This is not the part where you answer all the questions because this is the beginning of a conversation. So you'll notice that when you introduce yourself in this way that I'm going to teach you how to introduce yourself, then people will say, oh, tell me more about the philanthropy piece, or tell me more about the mentorship piece or, or whatever it is for you. And then you share, but this is just to get that initial piece off the table, but it's the piece that the majority of people, women in particular, because we have issues with confidence, right? Sorry, my puppy sits behind me all the time. Um, it's this piece that we either lose people or we've got people. It's actually the first 30 seconds. So if we're talking and we start to babble and we kind of go off and they're, they're lost. So what we want to do is just give them a really clear idea of who we are at the outset. Okay. So does anybody have any questions um, or just comments about anything we get started? I'd like, I always like to, I always like to open the mics and just let you have a, a moment to share anything that you want to share. Did anything that I say resonate? Did anybody go, Oh, that's me. Go ahead and open up. I feel attacked. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I, I, oh, oh, wait, sorry. sorry. What, wait, how about, uh, is it Nectaria? Nectaria. Nectaria. Gorgeous name. Okay. How about you and then Catherine? Next. Yeah. So I was just going to say, um, I mean, there is a, a joke, but also semi-truth to some of the attacky feeling. It's not attack, but scene. scene. Um, but I think the other part that I think is uh, that I believe is that sometimes sharing those fears or those nervousness, like, so I'm also an actor and, and I just remember like my first audition, it was totally like that where I was like, oh my gosh. And I got up there and I was like, this is my first audition. As you can tell, like it was based on like my clothing. Like I was dressed like I was going to an interview for a CEO job, not for an audition. Right. So I think that 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 sharing uncomfortableness with others, depending on the audience can also help to, you know, like I think at your dinner, like if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm the first, I'm so nervous about this, but hopefully I do okay. As much as that's hard to share our, our, um, our, you know, scaredness, like sometimes others I think can associate with that and give us a little bit of leeway, even if we're in you know, that kind of situation, you know, like as, as much as they want to work with stronger women, I do think that sometimes sharing your vulnerabilities helps to get people on your side, even though it's hard, right. But finding the right place for that is different too. I don't know. Yes. No. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Catherine. Yes. I just want to say thank you for sharing that vulnerability. So I have a regularly speak little segments, 30 seconds, one minute seconds at a local chamber event. And I find that if I'm not rehearsed or if I'm not in the moment or something happens, there's been occasions when I've just lost my thought process mm -hmm. and I've been able to get back. The last time it happened, you know, I wrote then and brought my notes. So I couldn't be in the spot again where I was like, oh my gosh, where's my train of thought? So mm -hmm. I do appreciate you sharing that. And I think it's just, we are human and things happen right. in our minds. And since, so to be able to like, find that space where we can reset and refocus mm -hmm. is important. Yeah. So I, yeah. I thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. 
I actually really enjoy sharing that story. <laughs> I would have been horrified sharing it with you about three weeks ago, but now that I've gotten over it, I'm like, okay, I need to share this because I think it happens to everybody. You know, um, anyone else have something that they want to share? No, okay. So first of all, uh, thank you ladies for, for the feedback and uh, nectar Nectaria, right, Nectaria. Um, I want to address what you said, because first of all, I 100% agree that there is definitely something human, right? About opening up and saying, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous and this is so difficult and I'm going first, yes. What I'm going to teach you today is so that you don't have to say that when you're in a pinch. When we're sitting at a table and there's, you know, like it's a women's evening and it's a dinner and we have lots of time and there's that we can say, oh my gosh, yes. But there are opportunities where we can't say it's not the right place to say, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. But first of all, you have one minute. <laughs> so you're like, you don't want to fill your minute with that. Uh, but also you just want to, you want it to roll off your tongue. And so the whole point of this is that we actually, you're not going to sound rehearsed, okay? But what you will feel is confident. And then it will give you an opportunity to pull it out of the bag whenever you're like, oh my gosh, somebody just asked me what I do. And I'm just going to say the same thing I always say, because I've got that one. I know that one. Now, something that I always share with the women that I work with around speaking is this is not something that you memorize. It is something that you know. And if this means that you have to write that down, write it down. It's not something that you memorize. It's something that you know. And the reason that I am sure of that is because it's actually from your heart. It's not your think, thinking person. It's who you are, capital A. It's what you do, capital D. Okay. So what we're going to do is work on the original version of it, but it can move and shift. It doesn't have to sound exactly the same every time, but the foundation of it is always the same until you decide to change it. Now, of course, there will be different people that you speak to who you'll give different versions of it to, okay? So that's why I'm saying we're doing the foundation, but then you might take it and tweak it depending on who you're speaking to. If I'm speaking to somebody who I know is looking for speakers, then I would put an emphasis on the speaker piece, right? And talk about who I speak to. But if it's somebody who's looking uh, for an, a general introduction, like I'm going to give here today, then it's like, okay, now I see a scope of who she is. Now I can start asking questions. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start by doing my one minute message. And um, giving... Marlo, can I yes. just interrupt? Uh, yes. Just because Teresa had a, a comment in the Oh, chat. yes, please. She, she said, okay. I struggle with confidence. And this question of what I do is so appropriate is do I appreciate this? Oh, thank you. Good. So this is the thing. Okay. When you feel like you don't have confidence, this is going to give you confidence. So I've done this workshop with several groups of women in business. And I've had women message me and say, this just moved me into confidence. Because all you got to do is be confident about one thing, which is who I am and what I do. Right? Like that's so important. And as women, we don't feel confident if we don't know how to put it into words. But I find if we know how to put it into words, that we're confident, like ask any mother, uh, tell me something amazing about your children. And they'll be like, oh, my child is this and that and this and that. And she's this and she's that super confident. Right. But when I say to a mother, so tell me what you're great at. Tell me about how you're a great mom. Well, you know, like then we get really like, we don't want to toot our own horn. Okay. So this is going to teach you how to just be confident and say, well, I'm an incredible mother because I just love my children and they're all still alive. <laughs> you know, like I'm keeping them fed, you know? So um, that's, a, that's a bonus, right? Okay, here we go. I'm going to start by giving you my one minute story and just, just listen, okay? Just listen to it. And I just want you to kind of get the lay of the land. And then probably as I'm sharing mine, you might think about yours and how yours might be laid out. I always have to settle in, so give me a minute.
My name is Romy Marlowe Ellis. I am the founder and the CEO of The Uncommon Woman. And I am a champion of uncommon women. I am a coach and a guide and a mentor. I'm a speaker and a teacher. I'm an advocate. I'm a philanthropist and I'm a business owner. In 2015, I noticed that there was a gap. There was a need, uh, a need for safe spaces for powerful, empowered, high achieving, strong women to have places where they can share what's going on in the back end of their life. They need places where they feel safe, where they can share their stories. And so as a result, I filled that gap and I filled it with my organization, which is called The Uncommon Woman. And now I support women as they access their truth, as they access their voice, as they heal their lives and as they make an impact in the world, whether it's through business or through doing what they love. That was about one minute and four seconds. Okay, that's what I'm gonna teach you to do. How do you feel about that? Good? Okay, so you can see that that would be just an opener and somebody would say, wow, okay, tell me more about the mentorship or how did you get started? But that, what I just shared with you is the full scope of what I do. Now, what was missing in the one I did in Chicago was I really didn't talk about, like just, I, did, I didn't mention anything about philanthropy. I didn't mention anything about working with women in business, which is one of the areas that my business has grown into in a bigger way. So I'm finding that even just using this one minute story, and I've used it so much since, I've had so many women come into my world. You know, when I get on the Zoom or when somebody wants to do a coffee chat with me, they're like, oh my crap, you do so much. And then we get, you know, going. Okay. So let's do this thing. So first of all, what I would like to do is have you make a list of all of the things that you do. So you'll notice at the very beginning of mine, I said, I am a founder and a CEO. I'm a champion for women. I'm a guide, a mentor, and a coach. I'm a teacher, I'm a speaker, I'm a philanthropist, and I'm a woman in business. I identify as all of those depending on what room I'm in. Because a lot of what I do within The Uncommon Woman, for example, is art. I do immersive, really incredible experiences. I have an art gallery full of images of women in my community that I take across the country. So it's part of the, the philanthropic piece of my work, my art gallery. So it's actually connected to my business. So take a moment and just make a list and, and don't, don't edit yourself, okay? Just make the list. That doesn't mean that you're gonna use all of them, but just let it go and let it flow. I'm gonna give you about one minute, okay, to do that. Feel free to steal mine if you like something that I said, if it resonates with you. And when you've made your list, maybe what you can do is just put, drop your words in the chat so that other people can see them. Okay, this is about supporting one another and sharing. So you might have, you know, a term or a word that people use that, that somebody else would really like to use that blends for them. I certainly am fine with people using anything that I've shared. And you'll notice mine are very generic as well. You know, I don't have any fancy, fluffy words in there. I'm not one of those. I just, Coach, mentor, guide, teacher, founder, CEO, business owner. Nectaria, founder, CEO, biz owner, coach, mentor, designer, manufacturer, actor, speaker, presenter, supporter of women. Love it. I feel like we have some alignment. Okay, once you've done that, if you want to move on to the second piece, Why do you do what you do? 
In other words, where did it start? So for me, it was in 2015. I recognized I had I had come from um, an abuse abusive relationship. I was in an emotionally abusive relationship, and I was a gym owner here in Thunder Bay. So I had a whole community of people that I supported. So the women who came to my gym looked up to me for support, mentorship, guidance. I was the strong one. I was the one who walked them through their divorces, them through their double mastectomies, them through all of the stuff. But in the back end of my life, it was a mess. There was a toxic relationship that I was trying to end. And I felt like I didn't have anywhere to go because I was the strong, supportive one that everybody else leaned into. I don't know if that resonates with anybody here. And so I recognized, now this was pre all the, there, there weren't nearly as many online communities as there are now, okay, 2015, a lot has changed, but I just couldn't find anywhere. I had a therapist, that was it. And so I thought, create what you need in your own life. I closed my gym and I started The Uncommon Woman and I created a platform for women that literally was about inviting them in so that they could share their stories. And now there's over 25,000 women in the Uncommon Woman community. All of these women have stories. All of these women have stuff going on in the back end or have had, and they want to access their truth. They want to heal their lives. They want to be strong, empowered women that they see themselves being. So in 2015, I filled a gap. So you'll notice that I said, in 2015, I recognized that there was a gap. That women who were strong and empowered and uh, high achieving didn't have safe places to share their stories. And so I created that, I filled that void and I created the uncommon woman. So that's, that's the short version. <laughs> that's what we call a short version, right? So I'm not giving you the back end of the, the relationship stuff and the toxic thing. I'm just saying I saw a need and I filled it because I needed it. I provided. So why you? Why do you do what you do? Romy, I don't, is that how you say your name? Romy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have a question about that because sure. I feel like every time I hear everybody else's stories, it's always like some very like altruistic, like something like, you know, your story is very like, oh, you know, this great, or like I was a mom and my child. So I'm not a mother. I'm not like blah, blah, blah. Right. The way okay. I got into my thing is just, I loved doing it. So I feel like okay. it's like this thing of like, like, how do I, like, I just love doing it. So I started doing, you know, like, it's not a, it's not an inspirational, like, I mean, it's inspirational, I guess, in a way in that if you love doing what you do, you know, then go ahead, start your business kind of thing. But I don't know, I, I struggle with like my, I don't feel like my story is this thing. That's like, people like, wow, that's so like, okay. I Okay, so every time that I do this workshop, I pick one person out of the group and I actually do their story for them. And it's always the person who says they don't have a story. So Nectaria, I'm going to do your story. So what I would like you to do, I'm going to give you about two minutes and I want you to share with me everything that you can share. And then I'm going to share your story for you. And then you can tell me if it's not inspirational for somebody else to hear. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to give you about two minutes because we're on a time crunch. Okay. So I'm just going to put the timer on. I just want you to talk. All okay. right. And <laughs> just, just start talking. Okay. okay. I, there are certain things that I'll just pick up. Yeah. Okay. So um, I started my business sophistication by, I just loved making soap. I learned how to make soap. I started making soap. Then I learned how to make bath bombs, started making that. And then I discovered um, 3D printed bath bomb molds. <clears throat> and I just, I loved doing it. I loved making it, but I was spending a ton of money on buying molds. And so I decided to learn how to design them myself. And so I started designing them myself. And then others started saying, oh, I want, can I buy those from you? So my business has morphed into, I design and sell, manufacture 3D printed bath bomb molds. I do other things as well, but that's the biggest part. Um, and one of the things that I also love to do, like I have an MBA, I have a lot of experience in, I was working in the baking industry before, 
And um, I do feel that I have a lot of business experience. So I like helping in general, my customers are small like hobbyists or small bath bomb makers or cosmetics makers. And so helping them to grow their business by offering my products, which help them stand out in the market, um, or I hope help them stand out in the market is kind of something that I, I really enjoy doing. I like helping people. And um, so that's kind of how it all morphed. I don't know. I feel like that's the whole thing, but. <laughs> Okay, so you you got your MBA and then you just weren't thrilled about it. And so you want, like, what made you become an entrepreneur? Just pat, the passion for making bath bombs? Like, what was the bridge there? No, um, so I worked at a bank. I was an executive at a bank. I built teams. I had, like, people loved being on my team. I built various things. And I just felt like I wasn't, I just felt like I was going through the motions. And, like, I wasn't making an impact on anything. And so I just wasn't feeling motivated there. And so I decided that it was time, like I had done this as kind of a side hustle thing. And so I just decided to quit that job and focus on this to see if I could make it into a viable business uh, for myself. And I, the things I wasn't getting there, I feel like I'm getting here in that, that discussion about like helping other people it's generally most of my customers are women I'm not saying you can't be a man and buy from me but most are women and I enjoy oh my gosh they're power washing outside of my face all of a sudden like of course of course sorry um okay so I enjoy like there are people who come and say like how do I handle this what do I do for like me sharing yeah. tips that I know about to help people okay. in their business okay I enjoy doing that like, okay. so like I enjoyed coaching my, my team, I okay. enjoyed helping them gain confidence in themselves, like things like that. So that's okay. it's not like the focus of my business, but it's a, okay. it's okay. something that I just do. I don't know. Got you. Okay, good. I've got it. All right. Okay. So give me a minute here and I'm just going to put it together. Now you'll notice that you got really excited. Anybody else notice her energy when she started talking about the shift and, and how she helps people? Okay. That's all heart. That's just, that's just heart. That's you speaking from your heart. So this is another piece of evidence around the fact that our heart is so much more powerful when it comes to communication than our head. Right. And so often we go into our head when it comes to creating our stories, but it's not, it's a heart thing. And that's why I can do, I, I can have somebody share with me. So one of my skills is listening. So I can have somebody share with me and I can turn around and I can share their story and they'll be like, how did you do that? Just because I just listen to your heart. I just, that's it. I'm not trying to memorize anything, right? So you have a great story. And I actually think that you have a story that a lot of people resonate with on both sides, both people that need help and the people who maybe feel like they don't have an abuse story. They don't have a like something tragic or traumatic happened to them that flung them into the work that they do. That's that's a huge percentage of the population. Not everybody has a story like mine. And that's also not the only part of my story. You know, I've had an entre entrepreneurial spirit since I was selling Kool-Aid when I was like four. But I'm not going to put that in this because the women who come into the Uncommon Woman are women that are connected to my, my other story, right? But I'll share my entrepreneurial Kool-Aid story with women who want to know how I became an entrepreneur. I'll be like, well, <laughs> I think I was born one, you know? Okay. What's your last name, Nectaria? Bogdanis, B-O-G-D-A-N-I-S. Okay. So I want you ladies just to pay everything that I'm doing right now is part of the teaching. So you, if you notice, I had her just kind of brain dump, right? You can brain dump into your voice notes. You can brain dump onto a video. You can brain dump with a friend and then allow them to say it back to you. Uh, you can also just pull the pieces away from it that feel right in this time, okay? So this is part of the process is the dump. Um, and so I just had her dump on me, <laughs> so to speak. And I'm going to do a version of your story. And I think that this is recorded, but if it's, I believe it's being recorded. So you could have this delivered to you or you could just put your voice notes on and just record it yourself. And then you can take whatever you want and use it or not or whatever, okay? 
but everybody has a story and they, this is the most important piece of, of this whole thing is that we all have a story and our stories matter. I think it was Steve Jobs who said story, storytellers are, are the people of the future because they're the ones that connect the past to the present, you know, to the future. So our stories matter and they are what attract people into our world. Bob Dennis. Okay. What's the name of your business? Sophistication. Sophistication? Yes. Oh, cute. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Nectaria Bogdanis, and I am the founder and the CEO of Soak Fistication. I am also a coach and a mentor and a designer and a manufacturer. I'm also a speaker and a presenter and a supporter of women. So interestingly enough, I spent the first half of my life as an executive. I worked in banks. I got my MBA and I, I was able to train teams and work with high level executives. And I was the person that always created the incredible things that they came to. So there's always been a side of me that's really creative, but I wasn't fulfilled. And to be quite honest with you, I didn't feel like I was making a difference. And so I transferred my creativity over to something that I absolutely love, which is bath bombs. And believe it or not, I've built the most incredible business, not only making my own bath bomb products, but also supporting other business owners. I now create molds and I support other business owners who are in the same kind of industry. And I, I help them build their businesses and I create opportunity for them to not only succeed in their business, but also, but also to have the financial freedom. And at the same time, I get to be impactful and feel like the work that I do is making a difference. Just something like that. You know? Now I kind of, I, I struggled with the transition piece, right? But the bottom line is that you can, you can bridge over and you can say, I moved my creativity from working with teams to working with teams in, in the bath bomb business. See, I don't really know much about that. If I had more time to get more more information from you, you know, we could really have a good transition. But I would just say, move, move through your career from transitioning creativity in executive teams to transitioning creativity over here. And now you get to be impactful, as well as fulfilled. Right? So yeah, not fulfilled, not impactful, fulfilled, impactful. And mm -hmm. there's just, it's just creating that bridge. Yeah. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a big help. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. All Thank right. You. You're welcome. So I'm going to uh, offer you now an opportunity to take a moment and in your own, in your own story, how can you sh show the person who has asked you who you are or what it is that you do? How can you show them your path? So if anybody wants to, um, unmute their mic I can help you out normally now I would I would take us into like little rooms or I would go off and sit with you but just for for the um, sake of this workshop if everybody else wants to I can probably work with all of you I have time to work with all of you um, if you, everybody else wants to like mute the the sound or turn the sound down and somebody can just pop out and I can just do it right here and support them anybody else want me to uh, help them Catherine? I'd be happy to. Okay, everybody. Okay, good. All right. Uh, Jennifer also said in the chat there, just, just to, so she awesome. can, yeah. Okay. Okay, Catherine, why don't you share with me and then maybe I can try to do yours. Okay. Share with you all the details or share with you my path? 
if, if would you like me to kind of do what I did with Nectaria and see if we can get some a form? I think the first part of, of what I do, yeah. I think I have, I think the, the struggle for me is communicating how I came to this piece because it's one part, part of my passion. So okay. All right. I worked my entire career in the insurance industry. It's been a male dominated, male dominated space. So I've had as a woman to overcome different things in that area. However, where my passion really lies is in the conversations that I had with team in making changes, but really when they discovered something about themselves, their skills, their experiences that sort of changed their life and opened up that bubble where they knew then they could go down a path they never thought was possible. So what I love doing is working with people and with youth and helping them basically discover more things about themselves, lean on their inter inner skill set that they may not have even known was there. Right them find a path that they never even thought was possible for them so kind of help build confidence but also help essentially for me it's eliminating poverty mindset in youth right now that's what i'm really focused on okay. but it's like this crossover between women based on experiences that i had and helping youth basically trust in themselves find a place that they've never had so it's not survival space anymore. It's, this is my skill. You know, I have this personality. I have this ability to speak. I have this unique thing. And it, it's worth something. It can do something. Right. So is your target audience teens or, or adult women? So right now we work with teens. So essentially 13 to 18 right now, maybe okay. pushing to the early 20s. Our company is called Insuring Change. And so basically what we do is I create the curriculum okay. that helps the students essentially discover themselves. Beautiful. Okay. Do you have a story as a, as a teen? Did you have a, a difficult? No. So then what kind of a, what, what moved you into? And the reason I ask is because often people who struggled as teens want to support teens as they become adults because they were bullied or they were. So what, why teens? Well, I think really it's because I've worked in business, I think for the past 20 plus years. Okay. I keep trying to make these changes as adults, but if we could discover this earlier. Right, okay. They're down our path. That's where okay. I think this is. Okay. So your, what you're really trying to do is help people early on see their gifts. Yes. Right? And yes. instead of instead of teens being uh, pigeonholed, they're given an opportunity to to shine and to find to find their strengths at a young age so that they can thrive. Exactly. Okay. All right. So the piece that you're needing support in is the which piece? transitioning the story because it doesn't in my mind okay. it doesn't necessarily go together what I did how I've gotten to this point doesn't necessarily fit with what kind of the space that I'm in right now okay, let me share with you what I see okay Give me a minute. Um. after working with adults in executive positions and with teams, I recognize that the challenges that adults are having are challenges that come from their youth, that the limited beliefs, the, the poverty mindset, the challenges that they deal with internally are showing up professionally. If we can get to the bottom of this, when these adults are teens, and provide for them a strong platform for them to see their gifts and to shine their light early on. We won't have adults who are struggling with these kinds of things later on in life. How's that? Something like that. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Okay. So I do see, I, I, but I, I was, I, I know, I understand why you were struggling with that because how do I go from bank to, and I, that was actually the question I was asking myself was how does she go from bank? But now I understand. So there's actually very, and I think the more that you focus on that, the more you're going to see it. And that should be pulled out in your messaging. Okay. 
right? And you could even go as far as saying, if you're an adult who struggles with self-confidence and self-assuredness and poverty mindset, I want to ask you, where does that come from? How long have you felt that way? Because I can guarantee you that if you look back on your life, you felt this way as a teenager. And this is why I do the work that I do today with teens. You know, that's a good way to get adults to buy into what you're doing with your teens. Sure. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Jennifer. And then Teresa. Right. Okay. Is this helpful? Yes, it is. Okay, good. All right. Feel free to ask questions too while we're going. Okay, Jennifer, hi. Hi. Okay, I'm Jen on the go delivery service. I do um, delivery personal shoppers and I also drive people. I used to drive for a taxi company. Okay. They let me go. So I figure it's like, I like what I do. I could do it myself. So I started a business like three years ago. Okay. So I'm in a small town. I'm a bit of a loner, but okay. I like I like helping people and the one that appreciate the help I do. Okay. So I have a bit of a confidence problem. I didn't have it before, but realized that I'm doing I'm like 55 years old. So okay. I find my confidence level is going down. And oh. the customers I have do enjoy my company. I mean my driving my business and everything like that so but sometimes i get a little shy and okay yeah okay so i want to ask you some very specific questions so i can help you here who do you serve and why and why do you do it you do it because you i think i know why you do it because you were let go from your other position so this is a way for you to continue to do what you do something that you love but you work for yourself right okay. yeah i don't Go back to work, nine to five work. Okay. I had to do okay. stuff that who I like. Do, who do you serve? I, I serve older people's um, seniors. Okay. They can do their grocery shopping and I also serve business to business, like delivering their product. Okay. All so right. I serve kind of everybody, but not everybody. So, okay. So, What's the what's the story that got you into this? Because we need to have a little bit of, of, you know, uh, should it should do you want to stick with? I was driving taxi. Like, why did you drive taxi? Because of the person to person communication, and it was something that you really enjoyed. No, I like trying different things. Okay, I move around a lot because I'm not comfortable in one place. So I moved to this small little town, and I've tried working out there. Okay. Try work is like factories and stuff, and I don't like it. I don't like to be closed, and I love driving, and I okay. like help. So that's okay. why I do something that I enjoy doing it. Okay, all right. Driving. Okay, yeah. let me see if I can. Let me see if I can help you here. Um, Jennifer on Jen on the go. That's the name of your business. Yeah, Jen on the go delivery. Okay. What's your last name? Spencer. Spencer? Yeah, Jennifer Spencer. Okay. So I meet people and I, they ask me what to do. I said, I'm Jen on the go delivery service. I take, I can take you anywhere you want to go. So I take people to airport, do whatever they want. Like not whatever they want. <laughs> yeah. So this is why we want to tighten it up, right? You just want to be able to just, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Jennifer Spencer, and I am the owner of Jen on the Go. And I love the way that my name embodies who I am, because I'm not somebody who really likes to stay in one place for very long. And I like to do a lot of different things. And so this business truly is a representation of my spirit. So how I got into this was that I was driving taxi because I love to drive and I love to connect with people. And I was let go from that position, which was the best thing that ever happened to me because what it did was give me an opportunity to build my own business and my own wealth. And now with Jen on the go, I can 
take people wherever they want to go and I can support people and connect with people and I can make incredible connections. And I not only do personal driving, but I also do B2B. So with Jen on the go, really what I get to do is be all over with everybody, but also have a, have, you know, make an impact and support people at exactly the same time. Just yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I, I like the idea of Jen on the go being kind of like the fact that you like to change things up and you like to, you know, even Jen on the go is not just personal, but it's personal and business. So yeah. I think really focusing on the fact that Jen on the go is a solid business that people can depend on because it's something that you love and it's, you're passionate about about connecting and about serving people and about driving and about this very work. If somebody, right. if somebody can be hire somebody who's really excited about that, because not everybody's really excited about that. Not everybody's excited about everything, right? Yeah. Then they'll feel better about supporting you. And I would just dial in the, you know, I support uh, B2B. I support, you know, airport runs. Like that's where I kind of like lost momentum because I'm not really sure exactly how to word it. But you could say, I, I do groceries, I do airport runs, I do B2B, um, and I do personal support for elderly, like, you know, driving them to their appointments, all of that, you know, but make it all in there within that one minute. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sounds Yeah. Okay, good. All right. And Teresa? Hi. Hi. Um, so what do you want me to say here? Yeah, so if you, so are we okay to, to. Yeah, I was just going to say to you, you know what, we've got, we're like five minutes over. Yeah. And the other one, we have another webinar starting at 1215. Okay. And they usually come in. So like, I'm going to say we have about four minutes if possible. Sorry. Okay. Well, maybe what I'll do, Teresa, why don't you just reach out to me privately? Okay. How do I do okay. that? Yeah, just, yeah, just reach. Okay. Um, so you can reach out to me at Marlo at the uncommon Okay. And we'll just... I'll just give you a little session because we don't have an opportunity. I just don't want to rush through it. So that's like four minutes, of, you know? Yeah. yeah um, sure. are, are you okay to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So all you have to do is just send me an email and we can just hop on like a FaceTime and I'll okay. just do with you what I did with the women here. Okay. Okay. okay so, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. So before we go, I just wanted to, uh, first of all, thank you for this. I know this was super fast and furious, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I hope it was helpful. And if anything, just to give you an opportunity to take a look at the clarity that you do or don't have around your messaging and just understand that you can take what we just did and you can turn it into social media posts. You can use it on uh, you know stories, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok. You can do a full video about, this can be the introduction to a full video. You can use it on your website. You can use it when you're standing on a stage. It can be the first minute of your any talk that you do. Uh, it can be something that you use networking. You can take it and you can make it as big or as little as you want. You can shrink it down to 30 seconds, 10 seconds, right? So the whole idea is just to shake your tree and to get you thinking about who you are, what you do, and what your one minute message is, because it truly is the masterpiece that will connect people to you, right? So if you would like to learn more about the work that I do, if you would like more support around speaking and, and messaging and engaging your ideal client or your audience, you can reach out to me at um, marlo at theuncommonwoman.com. That's my email. You can also find me on all the social media platforms. On Instagram, I am Romy Marlo Ellis. Uh, and on Facebook, you can find me at The Uncommon Woman. I'm definitely on LinkedIn. And uh, then my website is theuncommonwoman.com, which is going through a bit of an overhaul right now, but I think there's like a contact page. So you can reach out to me via that. And But I'm always, I'm always, I'm easy to access and I'm always available. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that it was purposeful and a good use of your time. Thank you so much for joining. And, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. And I, yeah, it's too bad there was only an hour. And maybe it's something that we could look at to do something again in the fall or something like that, because we would love to have you back. Well, I'd and actually love to do that. And if I could do an in-person, uh, the in-person is where it really rocks because then everybody gets to stand up and share it and it, they nail it down and I can, you know, but yeah, I would love to be able to take this and, and work more because I feel like I just sped through it. But as long as you got, as long as you got something from it, I feel like oh, yeah. it's full success. For sure. 
Yes, it was. I, I really appreciated it. And I'm sure that I speak for everybody here that uh, um, really enjoyed it. So I, again, I'm sorry about to have to end it so abruptly, but I did put your um, email in the, um, in the chat there. So if anybody wants to reach out to Marlo, uh, her email is in the chat there. And so thank you so much again for coming into the, or coming online today and, and doing this really appreciate it. And thanks everybody for joining us. You're so welcome. I am so grateful. Have an incredible day, ladies, and go out and use your messages. Can't wait to hear them. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.